Welcome to Level Up Mechanics. My name is Chris, and in today's video, we're going to go over some bed accessories and everyday carry items that I've added to my third gen Toyota Tacoma. All of these items can be found on Amazon, so I've provided a link in the description below. Make sure to check them out if you're interested. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section below, and I'll get to them as soon as I can. But with that said, let's go ahead and go over some accessories. The first item I have on this list is the taco net, which is a cargo net for the Toyota Tacoma. This one is an envelope style to help secure any loose items that you may have in the bed of the Tacoma. It helps to keep items from sloshing around while you're driving. It also includes four carabiner clips that will allow you to secure the cargo net as you see fit for your particular application. This item is very affordable, it's very easy to remove and install and is very useful when carrying around items in the bed of your truck. The next item I have added to the Tacoma is this OEM bed mat. It's available for both short beds and long beds, and the texture of the mat is very slip resistant. It's a simple accessory that provides extra grip to the floor of the truck bed to keep items, again, from moving around while you're driving. Uh, it has a beautiful design that complements every Tacoma. It's a really nice accessory to have for the bed of the Tacoma, and it's very easy to clean and maintain. The next item on the list is a Leatherman Skeletool CX Multi-Tool. It has a simple design with a premium stainless steel blade when compared to the regular Skeletool Multi-Tool. It also includes pliers and a carabiner and a bottle opener and a bit driver with both Phillips and flathead bits uh, and it also has a pocket clip attached to it. It's very lightweight with a minimalistic design that I like to carry around for everyday use. A multi-tool is always good to have on hand whenever you may need it. So I added this to the Tacoma for general usage. In addition to the multi-tool, another great item to have as an everyday carry item would be this PowerTac M5 tactical flashlight. It has a rechargeable lithium ion battery which can be charged using a USB cable that is included. This light has six light modes including five levels of brightness and also a strobe mode. I will tell you that the brightest level is crazy stupid bright but the flashlight does get really warm really quick. Another great thing about this flashlight is it's waterproof and it has an excellent grip texture to it so it doesn't slip easily out of your hands. It's great to have on hand at night, especially if I need to see what I'm doing under the hood and I could just charge the flashlight whenever I need to uh, with the USB attachment. Having a rechargeable flashlight for the Tacoma is always useful because you never know when you're going to need a little bit extra light. Another item that I've added to the bed of the Tacoma would be these quick fist clamps. They're an excellent option to secure items to the bed of the Tacoma. As you can see, I've secured mine to the molly panels that I put on the side of the bed. Uh, they do come in multiple sizes for various applications. And the only downside to these quick fists is that they do not come with any mounting hardware. So you have to purchase your own nuts and bolts or, or mounting hardware for your particular application, which sometimes can be a bit annoying. But they're extremely useful, easy to use, and a definitely a great choice when you're trying to secure items in the bed of your Tacoma. And speaking of quick fist clamps, I'm using these quick fists to hold this intertool steel splitting mauler axe. It's a lightweight axe with a 32 inch textured grip handle to prevent your hands from slipping when in use. It's definitely a useful tool for splitting firewood. And let's face it, when your wife names the Tacoma Red Rum, it's kind of a requirement to carry an axe at that point. Here's Johnny! Another item that I have for the Tacoma is the Cybertron Waterproof Molly Tactical 15.6 inch backpack. It's available in both black and khaki color configurations and is a great general purpose grab and go bag to store whatever you may need. It has a lot of spaces for water bottles, a laptop, and any other Molly system uh, accessories that you may want to add to it. Uh, it has plenty of attachment options to customize your own personal setup. It can be worn as both an over-the-shoulder sling or a traditional two-strap style backpack. 
I also purchased an extra adjustable utility strap to secure the backpack onto my Rough Country Molly panels, so that way I can easily remove the backpack at any time I need to to take on a hike or, or whatever if I have to leave my truck behind. It gives me great accessibility uh, whenever I need it. And one of the things that I currently store in my backpack is this Orkish tire repair plug kit. This tire repair plug kit has everything you need to repair normal tire punctures from nails and screws and whatnot uh, that you may pick up over time while driving. It's always great to have on hand if you need a quick patch to help get you down the road to receive additional help. I always carry a tire repair kit for all of my vehicles. It's just one of those everyday carry items that can really help you out if you're in a bind. Getting flat tires is kind of a nature of driving over time. It happens to everybody. So it's always great to have this tire repair patch kit on hand in case I need to plug a leak real quick so I can get down the road uh, in order to get my tire replaced or repaired uh, professionally. And then another item that I've added to the Tacoma would be this Survivewear waterproof first aid kit. It's available as both a small pack and a large pack. Um, this large pack that I currently have, it has an IPX7 waterproof rating, has excellent organization inside as all of the compartments are clearly labeled so you know exactly where everything is. It comes with a booklet that has a lot of useful information in regards to various situations like cuts and burns and if someone's choking, uh, a lot of first aid knowledge in this little booklet and is very useful to have as a guide for someone who may or may not know what to do and find themselves in a situation where help is needed. This first aid kit is a must-have EDC item to have on hand. In best case scenario, I just use this if my children get a scrape or a cut, but worst case scenario, it's there if it's needed. The last item that I wanted to go over that I've added to the Tacoma would be this NOCO Boost Plus Car Battery Booster. This item has multiple power options, so you can purchase this item anywhere from 500 amps all the way up to 3000 amps. Mine is currently the 1000 amp option, which should be plenty for the Tacoma's V6 engine. This item is rechargeable and is a great option to have when your battery is dead and no one is around to help you jumpstart your vehicle. I also purchased the protective case and the USB wall charger adapter separately so that way I could stay organized and have more charging options available. This car battery booster actually has some safety features built in including reverse polarity protection to keep you from accidentally crossing the positive and negative cable clamps onto the battery. One thing to mention is that this item tries to detect a minimum of two volts when connected to the battery. If your battery is completely dead, you can actually override this safety feature, but you have to be 100% sure that you've connected the car battery booster to the battery correctly. Otherwise, you can damage either the booster, your vehicle, or both. So I'm going to go ahead and give you a perfect example on this Isuzu that I currently have. This Isuzu has been sitting for about a year after I purchased this truck, it hasn't really been driven. The battery on this Isuzu is very, very dead. So I'm gonna show you that the battery has less than two volts and what to do if you run into this situation so you can override the safety feature and jumpstart your vehicle. So as you can see, this 1996 Isuzu Trooper has a 3.2 liter V6 engine, which is comparable in size when you compare it to the third gen Tacoma. You can see on this multimeter that the battery is currently only at 0.322 volts. So this battery is extremely dead. So we're gonna go ahead and test the NOCO battery booster on this dead battery. And we're going to override the system so that way it can charge the battery and we can see if it will actually jumpstart this Isuzu. So let me go ahead and hook that up. So here's the NOCO car battery booster connected correctly to the battery of the Isuzu. Now when I turn it on pressing the power button, you'll notice that these LEDs come on but nothing else happens to the battery. Uh, if this was actually charging the battery, you would see some LEDs light up right here. 
but since this battery is completely dead, we need to override its safety features so that it can charge the battery. In order to do this, first you need to make sure that your positive and negative clamps are connected correctly to the battery to avoid any electrical issues. The next thing you'll need to do is press and hold this red exclamation button for approximately three seconds to override the safety features so that it can charge the battery. As you can see now, all of the LED lights are flashing and it's showing that it's sending power to the car battery. So I'm going to let this sit here for a couple of minutes since the battery is extremely dead and then we'll fire it up and see if it will actually jumpstart this Isuzu. So I let the battery booster charge the battery for about two minutes before I tried to start it. And on the first attempt, it started right up. This Isuzu's been sitting here for a little less than a year with an extremely dead battery, and it started up the first time, no problems whatsoever. I'm extremely impressed with the NOCO battery car booster, and I'm definitely glad that I'm keeping it for the Tacoma in case I ever run into a low battery situation. Alright guys, that's going to do it for this video. As always, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below and I'll get to them as soon as I can. Don't forget to subscribe and make sure you smash that like button as it helps this channel grow. I appreciate your time and I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.